Hi, I'm Aaron, and this is Exploring Elixir, where we look at interesting language features, libraries, and design patterns from the world of Elixir and the Beam Virtual Machine. We're going back to live coding in this episode to look at an improvement in the Supervisor API that comes in Elixir 1.5. It's something that I think can really help improve how we do supervision trees in our Elixir apps. So here's a very simple gen server module. It just provides a ping function for us to use, and in a traditional Elixir app, we'd probably start it like something like this in our supervisor. So we'd say it's a worker, pass in the name of the module, some optional parameters perhaps, and then um, some supervision tree definitions, such as the restart strategy is temporary here. And if we go and run this, it, as we would expect, we can ping and there's our Pong in our mailbox. Okay, yeah, no surprises so far. But there's actually a real downside to this approach. And that is that if we come back to our module here, we have no idea just by looking at the code here, how we intend for it to be used and how it will be used. To know that we have to go and hunt down what supervisor it's using uh, or is using it, and then look at how that supervisor has decided to set it up. Um, so the information about the module and how it's used is separated. And um, it'd be nice if we keep this together so we could compare design and and, uh, impl and starting implementation. And Elixir 1.5 allows us to do that. So we can now just do the name of the module here. And when it gets just the name of a module, right, instead of a full child spec, it's then going to try and call child spec one. So there's some args that get handed in. We're going to ignore those for now. Um, and all you do with your child spec function is you return a map that has the information about um, how we'd like to start this under supervision. So we can give it an ID. We can say, here's how you start us. Um, our restart strategy will be temporary and the type is worker. Great. And, and that's it. And now we're done. Um, and if we restart this now, we'll see that it still works. We still have our process started and listening. So that's, that's great. And what's beautiful is that we now can see from the code in this module how it's going to be used, or how at least we intend for it to be used. Of course, you can still define a custom uh, child spec and a supervisor, but here we can now keep this all together. It goes beyond that though. So we looked at the fact that it has, it takes arguments, child spec that is, um, and we can indeed pass an argument into the child spec function. So what we do to do that is we create a tuple here, a two tuple, and the second uh, member of that tuple is going to be the arguments. Now we could have a keyword list here, so it look more like a traditional um, worker uh, or, or traditional child spec, but I'm gonna use a map here so that we can do some nice pattern matching on it. So I'm gonna say I would like this to be of type forever. And now this is up to, let me just close that. This is now up to the child spec or, or to the uh, module here to determine what that means. So I'm gonna pattern match on type is forever. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say, okay, the restart strategy is now permanent. And of course, you can do anything here that you wanted. Now, we, if we start both of them, we're going to get an error because they're both using the same ID. So let's fix that. Let's use module.concat to create a nice looking name. Let's bring that guy down here as well, except we'll call this one temporary. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll use that as the as the ID here, and we'll pass that in there. And then we will use that in our start link. Great, and now we can have as many as we want. Now to do our ping, we've, we need to actually say which of our processes we'd like to send that ping to. And now if everything is well in the world, this should compile and we should be able to run. And now if we, let's actually start the observer and look at what we've done. 
what have we done? So if we go to applications, and here we can see our two processes, one permanent, one temporary. Um, and the permanent one is started with the permanent child spec uh, or restart strategy and the temporary start with temporary. And the, what's again beautiful is we can actually see this in the code where the module is. And so when we had to change the child spec, which caused changes in start link and then some of our API, we're able to keep it all together here. We're not having to flip between supervisors and the child and, and the module and back and forth. And it's all kept together. And at the same time, our supervisors are kept really clean. Now we can go even one step further here. Let's say we've got an, another type and this is, I mean, this. Exact example would never happen in the real world, but go with me here. We're just going to say rand, type rand, as in random. Ah, let's not be lazy. Let's type it out. Random. Okay. So let me close my shell down here. And um, let's create another child spec. And this time we're going to pattern match on random. And in that case, let's do something perhaps a little unexpected. Um, I have another module here called random jump. Um, and it just re returns random numbers, um, but again, using a new API um, called uh, ra well, random jump, which we'll look at in, the, in, in an extra episode here. Uh, but for now, just go with me that this exists, this module. Um, and we're now going to start this exact function here. And again, we could pass in parameters if we wanted. And we'll say the restart is permanent and the type is a worker. Okay, we're good, I think. Let's try that out. Oops. I'm missing a colon. There we go. Now, if we start Observer, we'll see that we have, here's our random jump um, fun, or process. And if we come in here and we do random jump, we can now call rand. Um, oh, we need to provide a number uh, and there we go we get 855 a random number so let's ask for something between uh, zero and a million boom there's our random number so this is going into that process and, and asking it to provide a random number for us um, and so what's interesting I think about that example is it's not even using this module it's using some completely third module here which we can take a look at just to prove to it it does exist, this is what's actually being started. It's a completely different module. So this kind of opens the door as well to um, child spec factories, if you will, where you could say, I want children that do this kind of thing. And then that module based upon the kind of thing you're asking could return whatever, some other module, maybe not itself. So it provides a lot of expressivity, a lot of flexibility, but keeps it all together with the code where it matters. Meanwhile, our supervisors remain really clean and easy to read. So I think this is a great improvement. Um, now this pattern was possible with early releases of Elixir, this is true, but not nearly as neatly. You had to implement and call the child spec functions yourself wherever you're using them and um, you'd actually have calls in your, in your supervisor. It wasn't nearly as neat. And now that it's actually part of Elixir, I hope that this actually starts to encourage this this pattern um, and we'll see it used more and more in the future in Elixir libraries and applications because I think can, it can only be good for readability and reuse. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next episode.